Hi, welcome everyone. To day two of the Research to Action Human Trafficking Research Initiative Conference. We are very happy to have you here. Um, today, we're actually going to take the opportunity to tell you a little bit more about some recently developed research to action projects online tool. And we also have our colleague from the ILO library today, and that is Indira. Hi. Hi, everybody. <laughs> yes, so we're very excited to show you um, our tools. Perhaps like I will mention a few words just on housekeeping rules. Yesterday it was a webinar, so you cannot really see each other. Uh, it would be really nice if we can interact more with each other. So that's why today we change it to meeting. But that also means that uh, please keep your mic muted. And uh, perhaps after our presentation, we can take a picture together. So if you would like, please turn on your camera so we can have a group picture together. So other than housekeeping rules, I'm going to start. And Indira, I don't know if you would like to share your screen. And we yeah. can walk everyone through. My pleasure. <laughs> Thank you, Indira. So here, actually, Indira is showing you the online bibliography and the evidence gap map tool that the Research to Action project has been, de has been developing. And you see that Lorenzo and Callie, my team members, are here today. <laughs> yes. And uh, what Indira is showing to you right now is the child labor EGM evidence gap map. And here we actually uh, asked um, several researchers who are experts in the area of child labor, forced labor, and human trafficking to index some papers, peer reviewed papers, and reports that are related to the area. And you can see that in child labor, we have 503 documents. We have different kinds of filters that you can see on the top, such as by methodology, study design, and by different kinds of regions. You see that there are a lot of bubbles here. So this is what we call the evidence landscape. The bigger the bubble means the more papers and reports are available. While if you go to the gap mode, the darker the color, meaning that the more gap is there, meaning that there's basically no papers available in the intersection of the factors and outcomes and more work is needed. You can see that on the side, we have factors and outcomes, and there are actually some thematic keywords that are come up, coming up by the International Advisory Board, which is a board of experts with researchers, people who work at NGOs, workers and employers, organizations, et cetera, et cetera. So now, Indira, can you go to maybe the intersection of child labor and migration? All right, this is the intersection between child labor and migration. As you can see, there are 37 documents there. Exactly. And when you click into it, you can see that there are the filters that shows here. And let's click onto the first uh, document from on child labor in the Arab region. And see, now it actually takes you to the ILO library. And this report is available in Arabic and English, as you can see. Indira, you want to tell us more about the ILO library's tool? Thank you. Thank you, Lorraine. And welcome, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here and show you some of the different tools that the ILO library provides to researchers worldwide. So as you can see here, we have a record. You know, and we know we have the metadata that we need all the documents that have been identified for the bibliography will be you can see that they have this little icon here that says bibliography remember that yesterday if you were with us yesterday you saw that eric was talking about how it is really important to keep key bibliographies of selected curated documents but it is really hard to keep them up to date so in this case, we have an advantage is the fact that from research to action, the project selected the documents. And now the ILO library is given maintenance to the tool. So there will always this bibliography that we have nowadays is gonna continue to be updated over time. And that's an advantage. Well, let me show you how it works. This is just the record, as we said, 
you have the metadata that you need, and if the document is freely available. And if it's hosted, for example, in the ILO database, LabourDoc, then you will have access to the full text, which is really important if you need to share uh, with, with your colleagues and if you are working on a research. You have certain features here that are useful, certain tools you can share with the QR code, or you can also use the permalink, and also it works with the different bibliographic management tools. So now let's go and see how the bibliography works. And then what we're gonna do is, uh, let me show you how it is, how it looks here. This is the bibliography. And then here at the bottom, there are a couple of links, just keep in mind, because they could be really useful on your research. We have a link telling you more about the project, the RTA project, the Alliance 8.7, and also there is a little link here to um, a guide that we created so that, you know, if I am going too fast, you can always go and check the guide and it's gonna help you to use the bibliography better. Now, what we're gonna do here, for example, the previous example was about the Arab region. So I'm gonna do one example here. I'm gonna go to advanced search. And what I'm gonna do is search for child labor. And for example, I can search for Jordan. As you can see here on the top, we can select between the selected bibliography and another scope called everything. First, let's go to the bibliography because we wanna see what it gives. So this is the selected curated bibliography and you have four records that have the match between child labor and Jordan. They have been identified with the icon now only four records is, is something that you can manage easily. But as you can see here on the left-hand side, you can filter. And now let's see how the filtering works with a larger example. Just like Eric was mentioning yesterday, when you search in Google, Google Scholar, you're gonna get thousands of results. What we have here is actually uh, some sort of artificial intelligence that is works with a central discovery index that gathers academic publications and that's what you're going to find when you search under everything now beware hold on to your seats because we're going to get lots of results <laughs> okay it's going to be massive <laughs> Thirty-four thousand results okay but this is just once you have check the bibliography and you have the basis of your research, you can expand. So this is a tool to start your research and then to expand and go and discover further away. As you can see, there are articles. Well, I'm gonna start from the top. You can sort by relevance. The relevance works with an algorithm, something behind the scenes. It works most of the time, but also if you're, recent, um, if you're interested in recent publications, you can change the sorting, for example, the newest. You can also select the type of resource or also just eliminate a certain type of, res of research. For example, I don't want web resources, I can just exclude it. And like that, you're gonna keep, uh, you know, having a smaller and a smaller set. You can also narrow by date, I'm gonna say from the year 2000 to 2022, it keeps getting shorter and shorter and so on. You know, it works just like any catalog at the university, the ones that you're more familiar with. But yesterday, some of the participants were saying that you wanted more resources on other languages like French and Spanish. Something good about here is you can, go, we can select Spanish, for example. That's my mother language, as you can hear. <laughs> So, um, well, I see that this is not in Spanish, so we need to go and see what is behind there. If you see that you selected something to be in Spanish and it is in English, for example, and then you're confused, what is this patient and expert? This is going beyond what we want. The tool, because it's just searching within a, a really big set of databases can give you some false positives, you know, some information that is not really on what you're searching for, just like with any search engine. So we have an advantage here and it's this little bubble here 
when you click on it, you're going to submit a, an email. You can report a broken link, but also you can report a search is, issue. And now this is going to be sent to the ILO library, and the ILO library welcomes questions in English, French, and Spanish. This is our reference service that is open to everybody. So I would like to invite you to, to make the most out of it and send us your questions, and we'll be more than happy to help you on your research. And uh, now I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to send it back to you, Lorraine. Yes, Indira, <clears throat> thank you so much for sharing this. But there's also one more thing that I wanted to mention on the selected bibliography. So actually, throughout the last few months, the project team has also indexed about almost 200 papers that is related to human trafficking already into the ILO bibliography. But we're actually in the process of making an evidence gap map on human trafficking. So if you would like to contribute, also feel free to write us. We really invite you to write us as at RTA project at ILO.org. Um, your inputs are very much valued as you're also one of the researchers working on these topics. And uh, as you can see, Indira is showing you around the website. Uh, we already have the child labor and the forced labor evidence gap map, and we try to showcase the latest news and products that we're doing from the project, including the conference that you're here with us today. So with this note, I'm going to pass the mic to Finn, my colleague, my dearest doctor colleague, by the way, from the IOM, International Organization for Migration. He's the chair for the first section of uh, today's conference. And there will be a session that is an hour and a half and I'll leave it to him to talk about the housekeeping rules. Off to you, Finn.